The average person in the United States in their late 20s has roughly $10,000 saved for retirement. With a portfolio that size, how much dividend income could you expect to receive? While $10,000 won't be enough to fund a typical retirement, you might be surprised at how much it would pay in dividends alone. Perhaps it would be enough to supplement your income or pay for a vacation. Take a look at the different scenarios that would provide different levels of income. This will provide a preview as to how much money you actually need to become financially independent. Watch to the end to learn about a major mistake some investors make and how you can maximize your investments for exponentially more money in the future. There are many investment options that provide varying levels of dividend income. The S&P 500 index is perhaps the most popular investment. This is popular because it gives investors access to 500 significant US corporations with a track record of stability and profitability. It's also well balanced, which means you own a piece of each sector and industry that comprise the overall stock market. Warren Buffett recommends the S&P 500 because it has a lengthy track record of producing solid returns. This is what most investors mean when they say the market. If you buy an ETF or index fund that follows the S&P 500, you'll get a dividend yield of less than 1%. This is due to the fact that many of the major holdings are technology businesses, which are notorious for paying little to no dividend. This index would only pay back roughly $150 per year or $12.50 per month on a $10,000 investment. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, or the Dow, is another popular investment. This is another indicator referred to by investors as the market. The Dow is made up of 30 of the top US firms and is viewed as a second barometer of how the US economy is performing. It is often second to the S&P 500. Investors who buy a Dow fund will earn a dividend that is somewhat higher than the S&P 500 at a little over 1.5%. A larger dividend yield might be obtained by investing in a fund that focuses on income rather than capital appreciation. There are several high-quality choices that invest in equities of reliable firms with a lengthy history of dividend payments. The Invesco S&P 500 High Dividend Low Volatility ETF is one example. This results in a dividend yield of roughly 4%, which is much higher than the entire S&P 500. Instead of holding all of the companies in the S&P 500, it only owns those that offer the greatest dividends. As a result, long-term growth is significantly smaller. With a $10,000 investment in this fund, the yearly dividend income would be around $400, or $33 per month. There are also additional high-dividend funds available for older investors. These funds are popular among the elderly because they give greater stability. They outperform during bear markets and underperform during bull ones. When you combine that stability with the monthly income, it's no surprise that they are popular among retirees. A second option to earn higher than average dividends is to invest in a sector or industry-specific fund. This type of fund solely invests in one area or industry, such as energy, real estate, or healthcare. Because of the nature of their company, certain industries pay bigger dividends than others. Because of the volatility caused by economic changes, renewable substitutes, and restrictions, the energy industry is valued very low and offers a high dividend yield. The dividend yield on the Vanguard Energy ETF, for example, is more than 3%. Real estate investment trusts are also regarded slightly hazardous. And due to their corporate structure, the majority of their gains are distributed to shareholders in the form of dividends. The Vanguard Real Estate ETF likewise provides a yield in excess of 3%. Investors who are prepared to undertake some homework and buy industries that have fallen out of favor have the potential for huge returns. As these sectors regain favor, their returns would be in the form of dividends and capital appreciation. $10,000 invested in Vanguard's real estate or energy ETFs would yield around $300 per year or $25 per month in income. Of course, buying individual stocks is another alternative. Although many finance gurus advocate buying index funds or ETFs if you're a rookie investor with a small portfolio, this way you can learn about market behavior, get consistent returns, and increase your portfolio without taking on too much risk. If you're ready to do the study and accept the risk, you can decide to pick specific stocks. If you do decide to pick specific equities, 
you should look for a track record of dividend growth. The list of dividend aristocrats, for example, is a fantastic place to start because each aristocrat has a history of growing its dividend for 25 years in a row. ABV, a dividend aristocrat, now pays a 4.5% yield. If you invested $10,000 in this firm, you would earn around $450 in dividends every year, or $37 per month. You would also get any capital appreciation or depreciation that occurs as a result of future stock movement. Furthermore, it's a good idea to screen such prospects based on their basics. Check for fair payout ratios of 50 to 60% or less, positive earnings, and a variety of other possible measures. There are deals to be had with individual stocks because they often get sold off, whether it be due to some recent bad news, an earnings miss, or new management. Because the stock market has a tendency to overreact, this might provide an opportunity. A wise investor must judge the gravity of the news and make their own conclusion about the stock price. Since most investors who have $10,000 or a ways off from retirement, they should seriously consider ignoring dividends entirely. Why? Because investing in growth stocks has the potential to make you significantly more money over time. Dividend-paying investments have generally produced lower total returns. Thus, people who are still young should normally pursue growth. A 2% difference in your yearly rate of return might mean a lot over the course of a career. For example, someone who invests $10,000 once at the age of 25 and receives an 8% return until the age of 65 will have $217,000. If they had earned a rate of return of 10%, they would have $452,000 or more than double the money by the age of 65. It's crucial to remember that growth stocks can be more volatile, which can be tough for investors who are unfamiliar with market changes. An ETF such as Vanguard's Growth ETF or VUG is an excellent choice for younger investors. As the name implies, it invests in large cap growth firms such as Apple, Amazon, Home Depot and other well-known brands. A growth index will likely beat the S&P 500 over the long run, which is great for someone who has many years until they require income. The VUG's dividend yield is less than 0.5% since the majority of its securities pay little or no income. Instead, they reinvest earnings back into the company to keep it expanding at a high pace. Because of the low dividend yield, a 10% investment would only yield less than $50 in dividends per year, or roughly $4 per month. There are other high-quality alternatives to this fund that have consistently outperformed the market. People are often fixated with dividend yield and select the incorrect assets for their time horizon. In general, an investor with a $10,000 portfolio would be better off focusing on growth and rejecting dividends totally. How big of a difference would a $50 a year salary or a $400 a year income make in your life? When it comes to paying bills and supporting your daily needs, that amount is unlikely to be too large. When you're getting ready to retire, growth stocks will supply you with more money. If it makes sense at that point, you could convert your growth assets to income ones. Don't make the mistake of focusing primarily on dividend yield early on.